my god. Hey, welcome to the Matthew Rayfield television show on the YouTube television network. And today I have for you, just for you, a, uh, a new thing. A new thing that I made related to something I did last year. Uh, last year I made a video which will appear somewhere here. Uh, I did a video where I used my 3D printer as a pen plotter. So you'd like attach a marker or a pen to the 3D printer and it would uh, you know draw out like a vector. Boop, boop, boop. So when I was doing that, um, I thought it'd also be cool to use the printer as like a dot matrix printer. So it actually like, you know, make dots for pixels. Um, and I made that. Um, and it did things like this. So, so here, it'd take a picture of my face, a beautiful face, and it would turn into something like this. So these dots are pretty far apart. These are like two millimeters apart, but it can do whatever resolution you want. So here is a uh, one millimeter apart dots. And then uh, this is a really low resolution one. This one is three millimeters apart using a big, big old fat marker. I like this one. This one's my favorite actually. So that's what it does. And before it was just kind of like a, just a script hacked together. But now I've, I've souped it up, I've cleaned it up, I've whipped it up, and it's a, it's a web tool that you can use to uh, do this as well. With one brand new revolutionary feature, which is color, right? So it does multicolor prints now. So it takes a photo, like this bird here, this really fat, nice, beautiful bird, and it turns into something like this, something like that. So that's with uh, four colors. That's a uh, black, red, green, and you can't really tell, but a blue, a blue on the branch there. And you can use as many colors as you want, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, I got one more example. Here's my my shark. Look at this shark. I didn't do the pink, but look, that's a black and blue shark. I like the shark. The shark is nice. Okay. So let me show you the tool. It's a web tool. Uh, link in the description. Don't go to the link you're going to see on screen. It won't work. Go to the link in the description. Uh, here's a tool. And I just want, I'm just going to do a little rundown, a little instructions, because even though everything's labeled, and I think it's labeled well, you might still have some questions, or you just want to see how it works. So here we go. First, we need to load an image. And I'm going to load the bird up, because I'm going to show you the colors. So load up Mr. Bird, and or Miss Bird, not sure. Um, First off, we have the print size. So this, this is just the size of the print, and you know you want to size it so that it'll fit within your bed. Uh, I do 150, and if you change this number, so I'm gonna change it up just so we can see a little clearer. If I do 200, I'll do 300. Uh, I'll do 250. Just I, my printer wouldn't print something that big, but just so we can see it a little better. Um, so it'll it'll scale it for the image that you um, you put in there. Then the next up, next line, we have the print offset. So that's just like where an offset for the bottom of the print, bottom left on my printer, probably on your printer too, I'm not sure. But it's basically the same thing as like the nozzle, like the nozzle you have an offset for on a printer. This is just the offset for your pen. Uh, fiddle with that. Mine's not exact, mine's not exact at all, doesn't matter. Fiddle with it. Uh, next up we have the Z movement. So that is Z up and Z down to control that. I have Z down at one and because I don't actually want the nozzle to hit the paper, so I didn't put it at zero. Um, not that it should hit it, but you know, it's whatever. It's at one, just because I can move the, the pen up and down, and I'll show you how I set that up. Next up is the speed, feed rate. I have it at 10,000 millimeters per second, that works. 20,000 was scary. 10,000 is good. Fiddle, fiddle as you want. Uh, next up is the dot gap. That's really kind of like the resolution. That's what I showed you with my um, with mine, so that was like the three millimeter resolution dot gap, and that is uh, that's the one millimeter. And you know, if you depending on the size of the marker or whatever, you want to fiddle with that or for whatever effect you're going for. And the next up, we have the number of colors. I'll show you that in a second. The target color, which here is black, and then uh, color threshold. So when we load it, it's just black and white right now. And if we change the color threshold, we can see that it changes what it um, identifies as black or as basically white. So adjust that until the image looks good. 
Uh, I didn't explain this, but it's obvious. The one on the left is the input, the one on the right is the output as far as the image is concerned. So you're looking at the right and you're making adjustments. The next line here is the dither strength. So dither is, if you have no dither, it looks very stark. There's no blending of the two uh, colors. And as you up that, the it, it blends them. Um, I don't know how to exactly explain dithering. There's a Wikipedia page for it. But um, you know, it makes, it, it's stippling marks to to look like there's multiple, looks like there's a gradation of intensity of the color, but really each pixel is either black or white. So that's that's what dithering is. I hope that made sense. So fiddle with those two things and I'll try to get them looking decent here. Uh, we got another color, so but I'll leave it like that. And then there's a download button. If you click the download button, you get the G code. And that's the G code that you're gonna take to the printer and print. Um, and then lastly, we have the starting G code, which is just like in your um, slicer for your 3D printer. It's just the G code that runs before the print happens. So for this example one, which works for me, might work for you, uh, home, goes home, so home position, moves up four um, millimeters, and that is the position that I then put the marker in because it the next line pauses for 20 seconds to allow me to put that marker in. And uh, that works for me. Fiddle it, fiddle with it, adjust it, maximize it, minimize it, do whatever you want with it. Get it to work. Uh, cool, so let me show you the, the colors. So I've got one color here. If I bump this up to two colors, now we have two colors. And for the bottom one, if I click within here, it opens up a color picker. And so like I'm gonna pick red. And as you can see, red is now shown as one of the outputs, colors. And I can adjust that, get our nice little red bird. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not really printing this, I'm just showing you. So you just adjust those, add as many colors as you want. Like here real quick, I'll just do a green. Go in here, go to green. And obviously, uh, you know, try to make it look like the color of the marker or the pen or whatever you're using to print with. Um, and then you'll have multiple download buttons. So each color has its own G code and you would pop that in your printer and attach the right instrument and uh, go from there, print from there. So that's the tool. I hope that made sense. That's all it does. And then let me just show you real quick how I, uh, set up my marker. So when the G code runs, it uh, goes to home and adjusts. And then right here, it pauses for 20 seconds and allows me to put that in. And what I do is I just have this kind of janky setup. Um, I think I have a link to that bracket if you want to use that, but honestly, don't use it. Just either design your own or tape the, the marker to the mover um, and then I make the marker just barely not touch the paper because it's in the up position right now and so if it's just barely not touching the paper when it goes to the down it definitely will be down um, and that's how I do it so and then it then it goes and it starts going boop 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 lots of this and then if you come back a while later, you will have something like this masterpiece. And it takes a while. I mean, it'll take a while depending on the resolution, but it's gonna take a while. And, uh, but I think it's cool. I don't know, it's something to mess with. Um, I'd be interested to see what you do with this. If anyone does this, I'd kind of be surprised, but if you do, I'd really be interested to see it. So uh, let me know in the comments below if you do use this technique. And I think it would be really cool. I mean, it's kind of silly for something like this, just printing on regular paper because you might as well just use your inkjet printer or whatever. Um, but you really could do a lot of interesting stuff with it. I mean, you could use paint markers, you could print on some kind of weird materials. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities with it. I mean, really, I think, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff you could do with it. You could print on glass. That might be interesting. I don't know. Let me know, maybe you have some ideas. Let me know in the comments below. 
And uh, if you enjoyed this video, then uh, like this video, and then go watch all of my other videos, and then subscribe to this channel, and uh, follow me on Twitter, and Instagram, and Snapchat, and Facebook, and uh, TikTok, and then add me to your Christmas shopping list, your will, your insurance policies, and then I'll see you at your wedding. Invite me to that too.